Hi everyone, Kara Santa Maria here. The Power of Positive Thinking movement has a stranglehold on American society. Self-help gurus like Tony Robbins and Eckhart Tolle have made quite a living peddling its promises to an audience desperate to find the formula for success, prosperity, and health. And media moguls are eager to eat it up, knowing what a boost in ratings it can offer. Moneymaker for its architects? Sure. Scientific? Effective? Worth its weight in book prices and seminar fees? Not at all. In fact, the so-called power of positive thinking movement is not just lacking in the evidence department. It can actually be counterproductive. But don't take it from me. Listen to what Dr. James Coyne, director of the Behavioral Oncology Program at UPenn, has to say. And I think that the idea that if you just think good thoughts that um, you'll get wealthy, well, I think in a lot of cases that's not going to work. And the paradox is the, uh, it's a good way to make yourself miserable. Um, if you weren't committed to that goal, then you wouldn't get into a struggle you're going to lose. I hope somebody tells that to Russell Simmons, whose recent book, Super Rich, A Guide to Having It All, reeks of self-help quackery. But Dr. Coyne doesn't study attitudes and wealth. He studies cancer. And that's an example of when the power of positive thinking movement can really hurt somebody, especially somebody who's dying. I'm part-time in the Netherlands, besides here at University of Pennsylvania. And uh, there was an Olympic swimmer there. And uh, he had cancer, and he underwent treatment, and he went back and won a number of gold medals. And everybody wanted Martin uh, Van Wyen to um, become the next Leon Armstrong, a Dutch Leon Armstrong. And he said, wait a minute, I struggle to, to win gold medals, and you can call me a fighter that way, but I didn't struggle or fight to, to beat my cancer. I just went along with what the doctor said. And I don't want to be called Lance Armstrong. I don't want to give the impression that it's a matter of how you fight. It's just a matter of how you endure. And Dr. Coyne knows this well. He and his colleagues gave a large sample of patients with cancer a quality of life assessment, including a scale for emotional well-being. Other than the large sample size, what made this study stand out is that the researchers knew exactly what kind of cancer they were dealing with and, based on the severity of the cancer, that many of the participants were going to die. And so we hoped that we'd be able to demonstrate that emotional well-being predicted outcome. And the prevailing idea was that patients who are more positive should live longer. And we, uh, we couldn't find that. There was absolutely no evidence of that. Time and time again, this think well, be well mentality is debunked in the scientific literature. Yet this pseudo-scientific, pseudo-intellectual makes me feel all warm and fuzzy until somebody gets hurt theme persists in American culture. How would this make you feel if you were dying of cancer? If you were doing everything the doctors asked you to, putting on a brave face and staying as positive as humanly possible, but you just kept getting sicker and sicker? I get particularly concerned when the message, think positive, um, gets to be a prescription. And it's not a prescription that everyone can fill. I think some people are better off going out with a roar, going out with negativity. And if that's what suits their personality, so be it. It may not affect their um, health outcomes, but it may affect their um, quality of life in terms of they're doing what they feel they need to do. They're being who they think they are. And that's important. And it turns out that a lot of people detect illnesses early because they are, dare I say it, pessimistic. Sometimes neuroses like anxiety will help a person notice that he or she is sick sooner, instead of shrugging off and smiling through that lump, headache, or funny looking mole. There doesn't seem to be any evidence that um, optimism or thinking positive thoughts extends life, even if people feel better feeling that way. All right, everyone, you know the drill. Sound off on Facebook, Twitter, or leave your comments right here on the Huffington Post. Come on, talk nerdy to me.